honey. Yeah. What's the big news? We're having a baby. <laughs> Are you having another baby? Are you feeling a little nervous? Are you thinking about having a baby? And maybe you're feeling a little bit nervous. Well, I am now the proud mama of nine children. And in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing some of my thoughts about being pregnant with my ninth child and how I have felt along the way in my journey to this, <laughs> to nine kids. My husband and I are wrapping up a trip that we just took a little teeny tiny getaway, just a two day getaway to dream, to connect, to be in quiet. <laughs> and now we're heading back to our kids. Hey honey, hey. what's the secret to a good road trip? Uh, lots of coffee. <laughs> My name is Lisa Canning. I'm a speaker, author, and coach for moms, and I'm excited to share with you some of my thoughts and why I'm so excited about having another baby. But before we dive into it, let me know in the comments if you are expecting how many kids you have got and how you feel about having another baby in one word. We've been married for how many years? Almost 14 years. <laughs> how do you feel about having another baby? I feel really, 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 really excited. Oh. <laughs> We're due. <laughs> I realized there can be all kinds of feelings when having a new baby. I would say that my very first baby um, was a time of fear. I had just overcame um, cancer. I had cancer radiation for thyroid cancer. That's the scar on my neck. And I had even been advised to delay getting pregnant for as long as possible. So I had a lot of fear around my first child. And then I had a lot of fear around my third baby, um, our, our third child. Uh, I was pregnant when my husband was going through um, a significant bout of depression. And I know, uh, you know, we've, we've talked about that a great deal here on this channel. So those are two times that I can remember that I was, um, I, I did have, uh, I, I, was, I was fearful. I, I, I recall very clearly um, feeling fear at those points. But I remember something significant switched in me, particularly after, I want to say, my fifth baby. I'd say babies one through five, I was still growing very much in my identity of being a mom of many, mixing career with motherhood. I mean, that was the entire you know story of, uh, it's exactly where I start this, my, in my book, The Possibility Mom, it's the story I start with, this tension I kept feeling between um, being able to show up well at home and being able to show up well at work and if it was possible to do both. And so I would say the first five babies, I was in that space of feeling not so confident about my identity, especially as a mom of many. But then after baby number five, something happened and it's hard for me to pinpoint exactly what, but I think my confidence grew, my confidence in my ability to be a mom, but also my, my confidence in just my identity in general. And so I didn't really have the same kind of like, what are people gonna think? You know, oh, you're pregnant again. Like these sort of insecurities I had when I was a younger mom, I definitely didn't have them later on. And so I don't really have any of that anymore. <laughs> Basically from James onward, I haven't really felt that, you know, oh, I'm gonna be judged for having a large family or, or anything like that. So as I shared with you, my husband and I have been on this lovely little 48 hour getaway to do some dreaming and scheming and planning for my business. And one of the things that we talked about quite a bit was that we had different dreams, didn't we, honey? Mm. <laughs> Back in the day, like remember how we were talking about how we could never picture living anywhere but a city. Right. And now we live in like the total opposite of city. We don't even have a stoplight in the town that we live in. <laughs> and and then when we came back to a city, like we were just in Miami, which is a huge, you know, metropolis city. Um, what was our like? What was our reaction to it? Well, you had a very uh, neg you you were like, I'm not loving this. The traffic, the sound, um, the hustle and bustle, the uh, the demeanor of the people. Um, you were like, get me home. You know, it's like it, it, interesting. And the point that I'm trying to and wait, wait, was it so bad for you? No, not, not as bad for me. It's kind of a nice change, but it's not where I'd want to be long right, term. Right, right. And so, I mean, the, the point I'm trying to make here is that you can have a dream that you think is like, oh my gosh, this is it. Like, my, I, I used to say all the time, there's no way I could live 
not in a city. I need my Starbucks, I need my Nordstrom, I need my Uber Eats. I remember Uber Eats was the biggest thing that I was worried about sacrificing on when we moved to where we live now, which is really, really small. Um, but here's the thing, when, when, when we can have a little bit of openness to step out into um, fear and uncertainty and just be okay with dabbling with what, what is on the other side of that, I think you can unlock a dream that is so much bigger and better than we 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 think like than we know, um, and that was certainly the case, you know, for us in moving, but is so the case, I think, in having a baby. I, I really think like and there are a lot of reasons why somebody might not feel like they should have another baby, and you know, it's a deeply personal thing. It has to be something that is really just discussed with with your with your spouse and everybody's going to be different. There are mental, physical, um, you know, all kinds of reasons why someone would not want to have another baby or choose to not have another baby. But I think fear should never be the reason. We can never know absolutely everything. You know, we can never have total certainty on the outcome of a situation. We can take basically, like we can make plans we can do our best to follow through you know like and, and and take action on these best laid plans but even the most best laid plans cannot work out and this is where faith really happens this is where faith has to come in and I think for me um, faith that this baby will be a gift to my family faith that God will give me the strength and the means and the finances and anything else um, necessary uh, to to thrive with a ninth baby. Faith is really what um, I don't know. Just feels my feels my life and why I think I don't have the same insecurity or fear that I had when I was a younger mom. And I think this truly happens. Like, how do you get to this place of faith? It is a habit. It is a habit of trust. It is a habit that you can trust that you have the skills to be a good mom. And if you don't, you can learn them. I think it is a habit of trust that you have experience and you can recall the evidence of your experience. But then of course, for me as a Catholic, it is the habit of trusting God that he has a plan for your life and that he desires for you a future full of hope. Okay, but I let's just keep it real here. I can hear the people in the back saying, okay, but I'm still afraid. <laughs> so let's unpack these fears one by one. So one fear that people tell me all the time, and I have certainly felt myself as well acutely, whoa, especially in the beginning, is finances. You know, I've been an entrepreneur basically almost my entire time. I did a very brief stint where I worked in an office um, on the team of the Property Brothers. And there were lots and lots and lots and lots of times, especially as an entrepreneur, that I felt fear around finances. I personally just think children are only expensive if you make them expensive. Are there significant expenses with having a baby? Sure. Do they need stuff? Do they, um, you know, do you sometimes need a different house, a different vehicle? I'm not trying to be naive and say that there aren't costs associated with having a baby, but I just think like anything in life, you can be selective with the things that you have. You can be, um, you know, conscientious with the ways that you shop. And truthfully, with a little bit of strategy, I really believe that children do not have to be expensive. Um, and this is why I'm so passionate about helping mom entrepreneurs because of the flexibility a business can, um, can, can provide a mom to make money in the pockets when you know her children are sleeping or when she has childcare. I really just think it's an exciting time for women to be entrepreneurs um, in order to make impact and income. So the next fear that I get asked about quite a bit is, aren't you giving up a lot of freedom when you have a baby? You can't just like go out anymore whenever you want. Sure, certainly. There are certain, again, realities. Somebody has to stay home to make sure that children are um, safe and secure. Uh, I can appreciate that it can be overwhelming to figure out babysitters. Perhaps you don't have family nearby, um, or perhaps you can't think of who you could trust to watch your kids. I totally get it. But I don't know, like 
we have traveled, we have worked, we have gone on adventures, we have done lots of things that to me feel really free. Um, certainly, if I don't have a babysitter, can I leave my kids at home on a moment's notice? No, I cannot. But with some planning and some strategy, and sometimes it's not even that like hard, like I can just find a babysitter even last minute, um, I think it's very possible to feel like you have freedom as a mom, which leads me to the next point, travel. I remember saying this, I just want to be married for a while so we can just travel. Um, and certainly, <laughs> is it always easy to travel with a baby? I mean, there are, again, I'm not trying to be naive here, there's strategy involved. But here's the thing, I have now traveled more than ever especially in the last couple of years, um, especially when I did my book tour, I did a whole video on how to fly with an infant. I'll link it for you right here. And it's just the adventures that we have gone on are, are pretty fun. Like we have gone on some pretty fun family adventures. Josh, what's the favorite, your favorite adventure we've taken as a family? Oh man, I don't know. We've had so many good road trips. Uh, I love, I love our road trips. We did a cruise together. That was a lot of fun. I feel like some of them are still ahead of us, but also it's really great that we still do couples trips. We still, we still just go mm -hmm. with just the two of us. And you've also done solo trips, which mm -hmm. people might not think a mom of eight, soon to be nine, would be able to do. But we, we do it, we find a way. Uh, you know, and I don't know, I can hear the people in the back being like, well, must be nice. Like you clearly have the money to do it or you clearly have the babysitting support. Okay, listen, everybody, I hear ya, I hear y'all. And again, I just wanna share, we worked very hard to build the business I have now. We have, it wasn't always like this, but we worked towards it. We were able to, with time and trust and strategy, come up with a business model that allows us to do some of these things. I, I would say we're pretty, okay, we're not totally simple. <laughs> we're not totally simple people, but we're, we're, we're conscientious. Like there are certain places that we value to spend money and there are certain things that we, you know, just don't. I think travel as a family is even better, to be honest, but then you certainly need the time alone and the time away and the time of quiet to just focus on each other. And these are all possible things when you employ some skill and some strategy. Another uh, thing that people tell me about is that they struggle with the fact that their parents either aren't close to them or they wouldn't support them. They might judge them actually for having another baby. Well, here's the thing guys, what, what does it say in the Bible? <laughs> you leave your father and your mother and you make your own family, I'm paraphrasing, but you know what I mean. Uh, it's just, it comes to a point where eventually there are just gonna be things that even our parents, our friends, our coworkers, like even some of our best friends might not sort of see the same way as us. But that shouldn't be the thing that stops us from living the life that we feel really called to live. And so I think, you know, it can be challenging, obviously, to navigate. But at, at, at some point, we do have to live our lives for us and for the, the, the life and the legacy that um, your nuclear family wants to create. And here's one that I know... Um, I used to struggle with and that a lot of moms that I coach um, have expressed that they struggle with just being on the same page as their spouse or their spouse supporting their dreams and so I guess what I would say about this one is that there are definitely ways that you can become more aligned as a partnership and you know first of all your spouse can't read your mind so number one so you have to actually share your dream or your hopes for your life or your hopes for another child or whatever like with them number one number two you have to be able to give space for them to share their honest thoughts on whatever it is right and not you know cut them down for it immediately and then number three I do believe that there are ways that a spouse can or a, or a marriage like in, in a, a couple can dream together where both are bringing an idea for their future um, to the table and you can dream together and it really just begins with as simple as making space for it and just asking the questions like what do you want more of right now or what do you want less of right now those are some of the questions that we kind of explored on our 
get back to a place where we go to mass almost every day. And so we looked at how we can make that possible in our calendar and I feel pretty pumped about what that might look like for us. All right, so the other reason why we are so excited to be pregnant is the gift of a sibling to the other kids. They are so excited and I am so excited to go and say hi to them after being away from them for so long. You know, it's so funny. I don't know about you. Let me know in the comments if this is you too, but when I'm going on a little thing like this, a date with my husband or, you know, a little extended trip like this, I'm always like, oh my gosh, get me out of here. <laughs> you know, how fast can we get out of this house? But then you're like, I miss them. And like, I was making my babysitter text me all these photos and videos and now I just can't wait to see them. Home sweet home, time to see some children. Knock, knock, knock. Hey guys. Hello. Speaking of kids rejoicing in another baby, I want to share with you what it was like to reveal to our kids a few weeks ago that we're having another baby. Mommy and Daddy have something very exciting to tell you. I'm guessing it's going to be exciting. Are you getting a dog? Uh, what, is dog? what is it? Not, okay, a, not a dog. A golf cart? A cat. Not a golf cart. Who wants a new baby? I knew Mary would like it. Friday at noon east I go live right here on this channel to talk more things joy and motherhood more pursuit of dreams while being a great mom and I'm gonna put one of my favorite episodes right up here in the cards so go ahead and click on that card and I'll see you on the other side